Okay, so we're gonna start uh, playing with or explaining some of these, what we're calling the evolutionary movement patterns. Um, and these, the idea is that these are patterns that are inherent in our bodies because of the structure of our bodies and thus because of the evolutionary history of our bodies, why they've come to be the way they are. And so there's three basic ones that we'll be going over and um, today we'll start with the side to side spinal wave, the lateral undulation. Um, and the idea is that, you know, we have in our spines all of these vertebrae and each one has these different possibilities of movement. So they can move, they can go through flexion and extension over each other or side bending and also rotation. And these combinations of movements at all the different levels of the spine um, come together to make these different whole body patterns. And, um, you know, you'll see that these are, these are patterns that are common to all creatures that have spines. Um, so, anyway, if I just get into it and I start with the, uh, this side to side spinal wave. So it's easiest to demonstrate at first, just from this position. So if I'm just lying here and then I put my mind into any one part of my spine or any one part of the center line of my body. So this, the belly button here is a good, good place to start because it's, it's easy. And so here I feel my belly button and I just start to draw my belly button over to the left and then I draw my belly button over to the right and then I just start going back and forth like that with my belly button drawing my belly button over to the right and the left and the right and the left like this and so you see that as I start to get to the edges of the range even though I'm only trying to move my belly button the rest of my body starts to move. So just see if you can um, get my feet in that picture as well. I'm not sure if you can. And you see that as I draw the belly button to the left, my left leg actually elongates and my right leg draws inwards. And as I draw my belly button to the right, my right leg elongates and left leg draws inwards. So it gets this alternating, lengthening and shortening through my legs. And you also see that that does the same thing or a similar thing through my arms as I draw my belly button to the right. My left arm lengthens out that way and my right arm sort of sucks in and then as I draw my belly button to the left. So I get this movement in my shoulders. My shoulder blades are moving and you see even my neck is moving. I draw my belly button left and my neck naturally goes right. Belly button right, neck neck naturally goes left. So I'm not trying to do any of these other movements. I'm just doing left and right of my belly button and it naturally turns into a whole body movement. So then if I want to um, get increased sensitivity to my spine as well, then I can use the uh, kinesthetic feedback from the ground. So if I draw my belly button down towards the floor, and if you come from side on just to get a look at this, um, lots of people will be familiar with this movement anyway, but if my belly button's sticking up in the air, there's this gap here under my lower back. And so if I want to get better feeling for the actual vertebrae and, and muscles of my lower back, then if I draw my belly button down towards the floor and flatten my lower back into the floor, I can feel my back, the skin and muscles of my back pressing into the floor. So then when I do this movement, I can actually feel my lower back muscles as they do this alternating contracting and lengthening along the floor as I move my spine like that. So then I relax and now I can do this at another level of my spine. So that's increasing my sensitivity to this part of my body and then how the movement there translates to movement in the rest of my body. And then I can do it in another part, like I can move my attention to say this part, maybe at the, the base of my rib cage, and I can draw that down into the floor. So I feel, so I feel these parts of my back pressing into the floor. And then I move that to the left and to the right, to the left, to the right. And then I can even start picking up the pace so I could 
you know, do it in all of these different ways and just get my body to loosen up and you see it starts to get movement through the ribcage, this side of the ribcage all lengthening, this side contracting, same with the abdomen, this side of my abdomen is totally contracted between my ribcage and my pelvis, whereas this side's lengthened. And again, that's all stuff that I'm not trying to do, I'm just, with my mind in this part, moving it left and right, left and right, like that. So you see clearly, quite clearly, I hope, how this whole body movement happens from just attention in one part and like one movement of one part of the spine naturally makes the whole spine move and then that naturally connects to the arms and legs and makes the whole body move and makes a coordinated full body movement pattern just from movement of one part of the spine. Okay so what then becomes very interesting about this is like if I say you start to see it with what I was doing with the legs before but now if I put my arms like this then you can see it come a bit more clearly how as I move so let's say I'll start it with uh, the center of my chest now as I move it one way as I move it to the right my right arm lengthens by itself and my right leg lengthens so I get this lengthening from the tips of my right fingers to the tips of my right toes and the left side draws together the left arm draws in the left leg draws in and again I'm not trying to do that that's just happening by itself so you see one side of the body shortening and the other side lengthening. So then if I start to allow my elbows and knees to bend with that movement, then I start to get, and if I let them bend more and more, then you see the elbow and knee drawing together, elbow and knee drawing together. The body starts to rotate now by itself. And so this, it's really good exercise by the way for all of these lateral sort of muscles of the body. But anyway, so then if I come over onto my front like this and I start doing the same thing. So first of all, if I just have my arms and legs out straight and I'll just put my mind in some arbitrary part, the center of my back here and I move it to the right and to the left and to the right and to the left and then you see if I start allowing my knees and elbows to bend then you get this one side of the body shortening the other side lengthening go the other way this side lengthens the other side shortens and you see this and now hopefully this is starting to become quite apparent as to what this is leading to because now if I just start to do the same thing left right left right and then I just start to give a little bit of grip in the fingers or a little bit of push off in the toes then I start to get this sort of stuff going on and this floor is slippery so it's easy enough for me to slide but also on a grippy surface I can push more with my feet and you get this and you know babies obviously do a lot of this and then if I start to come up a little bit more, then it turns into this. Again, it's easier for babies because they've got soft knees, but you see how it's a, it's a natural thing. It's just this left and right movement of the spine. And then I just start coming up a little bit more and up a little bit more and it becomes... So see if you can get this from above, just the shape of the body from above. So it's this bowing of the spine one way and then bowing back the other way. Elbow and knee go together on one side, lengthen on the other side. And then start to come up a bit more. And it becomes this movement. And then, if I then stand slightly higher, and I'll come back into the light. So where am I? I'm here. Do, 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 do. And it turns into walking with that same thing of 
here, this side is drawn together, the arm and leg pull together, and this side you can see is long. So with each step, one side of the body lengthens, one side of the body contracts, and it's the same, the same configuration. One side's long, the other side's short, like this. And it shows up in walking. And again, if I go back down to here, and I just go to this left right thing, left right with the belly button, and you see one leg lengthening, the other shortening, you get this movement through the legs going out the feet. And then when I stand up, same thing, if I just go belly button left and right, now the feet are in contact with the ground, so the movement of the belly button left and right becomes a one leg, this leg lengthens and pushes, this leg shortens and draws in, this leg lengthens and pushes, and then start walking, start walking, and push, 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 this one contracts, this one lengthens, this one contracts, this one lengthens, and it's the same pattern. So, it's good, it's good, it's good exercise, this, all of these, all of these positions and so on, and you see how, you know, this is the kind of stuff a baby does, you know, they start off lying on the ground, and this is just one of the main movement patterns, we'll go over the other ones later, but this one, you know, it shows up so much, all of this sort of stuff, all of these little reflexes that the babies have of alternate foot pressing, it comes out of this side to side undulation of the spine. Now this is, um, well I, I find this very, very interesting um, and it's, you know, it's excellent abdominal exercise. It's another, another great thing about this sort of work is that by, um, it allows us to develop our awareness of our bodies systematically. And so a lot of us are, um, well all of us, have these vague areas where we can't feel so well what's going on. Most of us can feel the front of our bodies better than the back of our bodies. And a lot of this stuff in the, is the, the back especially is a very vague area to us. And this kind of practice will help us Definitely, there's no one that this, well, except for people with neurological deficits of some sort, there's no one that this won't work for if we just systematically go, okay, look, I can feel here because I can put my finger here. And that means I can put my finger here and I can start doing movements here, left and right. Firstly, I can also go diagonals, 45 degrees this way, 45 degrees this way. Other diagonal, 45 degrees, 45 degrees. Or I can do the, I can do circles with it, so I can trace circles like this, and the whole time I can pull it into the floor, and then I can feel that part of the back pressing, and so I'm developing a clearer awareness of this area, filling in this space in the somatosensory cortex, in these body maps in my brain, so I know what this part's doing, and then I just go to the next spot. I just go two inches up, for example, and do the same thing you know, different directions, doing circles, whatever it is, and just gradually, little by little, I can go through each part, first of all, with the front of the body, using my fingers for feedback, then later on, just with my mind, just going directly to, you know, any part, maybe the base of my neck, and I just start gently going left and right, and gradually it loosens up the other parts, and it turns into a whole body movement, but I'm still developing awareness of this area, and this area's relationship all the way down to the feet because I move this area and the rest of the body responds to it. So it's great for movement practice, it's great for meditation practice. Um, all of these like Indian and Taoist and Buddhist, lots of these different groups have uh, as one of their prerequisites a full complete body awareness, especially of the spine. And also for your back health, you know, like these, these are, there are, there are physiotherapy techniques which, you know, people will pay $100 or more at a time to go see a physiotherapist and they say, oh, this 
one vertebra in your back is particularly stiff in lateral flexion so I'm going to mobilize it for you for 20 minutes or whatever and you know you pay them a lot of money but this way we can do it ourselves and it's so easy you see how easy it is and you can do it not just for one vertebra but you can do it for each and every single vertebra all the way up your spine and as long as it doesn't hurt while you're doing it it should feel really nice then there's no way you're going to hurt yourself and just gradually you fill in fill in your whole spine um, so that's a good start and next week we'll I think we'll go into the uh, the dorsal wave or the, the front back spinal wave which obviously is another thing that shows up in all sorts of other creatures and um, yeah hopefully hopefully some people will give this a go and the more you start doing it as well then you start to uh, empathize and and feel and understand the movements of other creatures that do it and so many other creatures do it you see lizards doing it you see all of these other mammals doing it you even see fish doing it all of these creatures with a spine and we start to experience in our own bodies the truth of our shared ancestry with these other creatures not just on an intellectual level and say yeah yeah I understand the theory of evolution but actually sink back into our own bodies and into these natural movements of our own bodies which most of us have forgotten and then when we see these other creatures doing it then we feel you know with all our mirror neuron systems which hopefully people are um, catching on to we start to actually feel in our own bodies what it's like to be them and you know this is this is a this is a, a, a beautiful thing to, to really really start to embody and, and 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 feel on a visceral level what evolution means what it means to be a, 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 sh a sharing of ancestry with all of these other creatures I think I should leave it there so um, we'll, we'll do some more next week